I'm going to sp be speaking on the issue of identities and this past presidential election in Taiwan. Um, the, uh, um, the election result, as Clay had summarized for us, um, was a clear victory for Ma. And um, undoubtedly, a lot of the uh, foreign politicians, observers, media might, not all, but many might interpret the result as saying that the voters in Taiwan uh, generally are okay with unification. They do, they do not mind with unification, do not mind um, the possibility of unification. Um, but if we take a look at the, uh, um, the polls, which actually Clay had summarized more detail in, more, in greater detail than I have here, we would see that the uh, reality is, uh, is a little bit, bit more complicated. Um, so the one poll that I cited here would indicate pretty similarly to what Clay's earlier presentation describes, that the vast majority in Taiwan actually supports the, man the maintenance of the status quo. Now, how does one define the status quo is another question, but um, poll after poll on this issue has affirmed to us the message that that is the majority um, view. Um, and uh, in contrast to what some of the foreign media and uh, observers might interpret, um, might draw the, the conclusion from this election, the uh, uh, option of unification is actually quite unpopular in Taiwan. Um, I think Clay, Clay's earlier poll, the, the number is a little bit bigger, but similar. I mean, around 10% including unification now or unification later, and then there is um, uh, a minority of people who supports either independence now or independence later. So anyway, um, this would suggest that the uh, um, issue of um, unification versus independence, or we might say the issue of um, national identity, did not dictate the outcome of this election. Um, some of my fellow distinguished panelists will probably talk about what factors then did um, shape this outcome, and I'm not gonna uh, get into that. Instead, I'm gonna address the question of, in, the, the, the question of, of the role of national identity in this election, if at all. How does it factor into this election, and what does it mean for the young democracy of Taiwan? And the first observation, I mean, in the interest of time, I'll only make a few observations. The first one I will say that I'll mention is that the uh, issue of national identities are clearly marginalized in this particular election. Um, both parties, both campaigns, and, and I have to um, qualify what I'm saying here by, by adding that obviously I'm, uh, for the interest of time, I'm bracketing James Soon's campaign and just focusing on the two major parties here. And I will say that I think both Ma and Tsai avoided campaigning on strong national or ethnic identity in this particular campaign and in this particular election. And I think that is a conscious choice on their part. Um, this reflects a, a strategic shift for both parties. And I'll describe the shift in terms of uh, a shift from ethnic solidarity to pragmatism. So both parties have chosen to silence their past discourses on either celebrating a Chinese identity or a Taiwanese identity as the core or the content defining the identity of the people on Taiwan. Instead, what we've seen, and I think Clay commented on that more, um, more elegantly and, and interestingly than I can here, but, but the point here I'm making is that I think both Ma and Tsai competed on um, offering a pragmatic solution to the tensions that are experienced by everyone in Taiwan, or you know, almost everyone in Taiwan, and that is the tension of wanting to have some sort of sovereignty, um, as well as wanting to maintain and expand the, the uh, possibility of economic opportunities on the mainland. And both campaigns promised that they can deliver that. Both campaigns promise that, in fact, if you elect me, I'll give that to you. Um, their formula is quite different. Um, the election outcome would suggest that Ma's campaign was probably more convincing, but that's um, an issue that I won't get into here. What's important for our consideration on the issue of nationalism is the shift from the emphasis on cultural legacy or ethnic identity um, 
as the main issue for national identity um, is a shift away from that and toward an emphasis on pragmatism. This observation, um, I will argue, um, sort of pushes us to broaden our perspective um, away from the election. I know this is an election-centered discussion and most people are interested in analyzing this election. But I'm going to take a few moments and say, well, what does this say to us about the broader social trends here? And I believe that what I have just described reflects a couple of social trends um, that have been developing in Taiwan in the past couple of decades. Um, and I will just identify three um, in the interest of time. Um, first of all, I will, um, I guess, Speaking of time, <laughs> try to go faster here. Um, so first of all, as we all know, there is um, past and, um, and, and strong polarization uh, of the Taiwanese versus Chinese identities. I don't think I need to go into too much detail on that. Um, but after, after, you know, about two decades of, of over-politicization and over-mobilization of those issues, I think there, there are two more current, if less visible, trends that are developing in Taiwan. And one of them is that there is actually, I think, a, uh, a trend toward the convergence of what's often described or referred to as the Taiwan subjectivity, Taiwanese subjectivity, Taiwan xing. Right, and um, and most people in Taiwan, despite their blue versus green divide, would ag agree that the uh, um, um, the future of Taiwan should be determined by the citizens on that island. Even though they might disagree on what to do about that future, at least there is there there is agreement on who should make that decision. There is agreement on the appropriate procedures for making that decision, and that is some sort of democratic consensus, either through elections or through some sort of referendum. There's disagreement on which one, but at least there's consensus on um, the democratic procedure as the, the, the appropriate procedure for that. However, this consensus on the recognition of Taiwanese subjectivity on the island um, is not well elaborated. I think that there, one can say that if you look at the political culture, the civil society and civic groups in Taiwan, um, unfortunately, the grassroots discourses on what Taiwanese subjectivity actually means, how to culturally express and, and represent that subjectivity, other than referring to the procedure, um, those discourses are pretty thin. And, and so uh, in the interest of time, I won't go into detail. Let me just say that a couple of recent academic publications um, does describe that, that there is this consensus on the democratic procedure, but procedure alone does not provide content right, to an identity. And so that is a dilemma. Um, in other words, one way to describe it is that I think Taiwanese voters or Taiwanese citizens are pretty good at answering multiple choice questions, but they have a hard time with essay questions. right? And so, um, so why is this a problem? Um, broadening our perspective even further, I think that these social trends that I identified here, that we've moved past the polarization toward consensus on Taiwanese subjectivity, yet having or lacking rich grassroots discourses on what it means, um, reflects some challenges on Taiwan's journey toward uh, democratic consolidation. Um, and, and those challenges are important if Taiwanese voters are serious about, are committed to resolving its national identity issue democratically. Um, I, I think that um, what we've observed here can be described as Taiwan's journey, this young democracy's, democracy's journey uh, f away from ethnic nationalism toward what one can describe as civic nationalism, a national identity that is not defined exclusively on one ethnicity or two or one particular cultural legacy or so, uh, but rather a, nas a national identity that is civic in nature, that is um, in in inclusive and um, um, open-ended. Um, so, so let me say a few words quickly about the uh, uh, achievements as well as the challenges that um, are reflected 
by what I've said earlier in terms of Taiwan's journey towards civic nationalism, in terms of thinking through its national identity issues. Um, on the plus side, I think Taiwan, as I've said earlier, that the voters or the citizens in Taiwan have um, figured out their political boundary, the boundary of their political entity. Um, they have figured out the, the appropriate procedures and have figured out the, uh, the principle of in inclusion and, and tolerance um, that is a leaving behind earlier decades of um, um, debates and, and struggles to celebrate um, a particular ethnic identity at the expense of other ethnic identities. So those are good things, but still there, we, there's a long way to go, right? And, um, and the, the long way to go refers exactly to what I said earlier, that we need voters and citizens that can answer essay questions about identity issues. In other words, um, that they, to, to have more people that can um, feed and develop content, to elab elaborate on the content of what this civic national identity means. So what is the happening and what is um, what more needs to be done in various sectors. Um, this um, sort of shows that or, or indicates at least that there is a need for Taiwanese democracy at this stage to move away from election-centered politics to a project of um, of civic nation nationalism, a, a project of civic nation building. Uh, which is not, you know, something that can be done in a particular election or even in four years that will do it in the next election four years from now. But it oftentimes, if we look at other um, cases where civic nationalism has developed and successfully and, 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 and stay, um, that it often is a multi-year, even multi-generation, and certainly a multi-sector cultural project. So in the state uh, sector, we've, what we, we've seen is that um, past discourses sustained by hegemonic cultural elites have lost coherence. Th this argument that Taiwan is the legitimate, legitimate carrier of Chinese culture, that discourse has lost coherence, but the state or the cultural elites have not really come up with um, another coherent discourse to replace that. The social movements or the opposition, more commonly known, um, are at the moment sort of torn between um, their past legacy of ethnic solidarity versus the sort of move toward this em embracement of civic solidarity. Um, th in the past, the opposition has often been criticized for being holocentric or fulao, sawen zu yi, right? And so, um, so there's that struggle between these two trends. In terms of the civil society sector, um, we are yet to see that the civic groups in Taiwan uh, to develop truly bipartisan or nonpartisan discussions and cultural expressions of what Taiwanese subjective, subject, subjectivity really is. Um, and so, you know, these are things that are sort of up in the air. There is a lot of vitality, but a lot more needs to happen. And, um, and so that sort of is what the, uh, the current uh, status is. So in this slide, I will just make a few um, comments before my time runs out. In this context, I will say that uh, despite her defeat, I think Tsai's uh, proposal of Taiwan consensus can be seen as a step in the right direction. Um, she argues that the consensus about Taiwan's identity and Taiwan's political future should be based on majority opinion through bipartisan open dialogues. And this is an important principle because what she's not doing, well, she's not saying that um, I can represent all of Taiwan. Um, it's the uh, a shift away from the 50% plus one. Um, politics that if you have 51 percent, you win the election, then you can claim to uh, represent all of the, the opinions in Taiwan. Instead, she's acknowledging that there is vast difference between the 51 percent and the 49 percent in Taiwan, and that gap is hardly 
bridgeable through election alone, that even whoever wins the position, um, the state leaders need to engage in bipartisan dialogue. Whether she's sincere or not, people question that, but at least as a campaign strategy, as a position, um, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. It is, of course, criticized by various actors, um, political actors, as ill-defined, that it's you know empty, it doesn't have a lot of content to it. Um, personally, I think the criticism has some validity to it, but it's, it is also ill-targeted. Um, it has some validity to it because it is true that Tsai Ing-wen has not specified the forums or the mechanisms through which such bipartisan dialogues can actually proceed, and more importantly, that such bipartisan dialogues will uh, continue to be bipartisan, that it won't quickly collapse back into a, a partisan discourse or monologue. But I think it is ill-targeted because by definition consensus building needs to be bottom-up rather than top-down. Um, in other words, um, you know, this kind of valley, the photo we have here is a, a rally for, for Tsai's um, campaign. And we're not looking for a better defined um, slogan to replace Taiwan consensus to, to, in order to draw an even larger crowd. In other, instead, what we need is um, the input from civic groups, from grassroots networks, gra grassroots participants. So the people who said it is ill-defined, um, almost all of them imply that Tsai <coughs> should have defined a priori what the content should be. And I think that in itself falls back to this top-down approach, which is um, in my opinion, not going to be fruitful for uh, what Taiwan needs uh, currently if, if the goal is to have a successful uh, civic nationalism pro project. Um, there are indeed some examples of lively civic conversations on identity issues. Those are not nation about national identities, but then again, identity isn't just national identity isn't all there is to identity issues either. So the two examples that I have up here are civic groups that, are, um, that have been active um, on the issues of gender identities and aborig aboriginal empowerments. They have uh, consolidate, consolidated the principle of tolerance and inclusion, and more importantly, these groups through years of activities and grassroots mobilization and, and cultural engagement um, have developed rich cultural expressions of what these identities mean. It's not just a label, it um, actually has content. And uh, like I said, it, it, those um, achievements were, um, you know, took place in the, in the grassroots networks and they often are also reaffirmed as citizens speak out against politicians' faux pas. So it's not a top-down approach, it's more, you know, the uh, civic groups are uh, one step ahead of the politicians and some of the examples are well known in this room when Shi Ming the earlier on during the DPP primary uh, came out to question Tsai's sexual orientation, he got into a lot of trouble, right? So that would be um, an example of what I'm talking about here. So to quickly conclude, uh, what does these observations or comments have to, to say about the future of Taiwan's civic nationalism? Um, I think we can make a few observations here. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure in the discussion to come, will want to talk about campaign strategies, external or outside factors, or even vote buying, et cetera, et cetera, that might explain this particular outcome, and those are important issues. Um, however, I want to add, in addition to these discussions, that Taiwanese voters, Taiwanese citizens today are faced with a challenge to transform themselves from political, political subjects to, in, um, to Taiwanese political subjects are facing the challenge to transform themselves from enthusi enthusiastic voters to engaged citizens. Um, my, early, my last two slides will indicate that there are hopeful signs um, in various sectors of the Taiwanese society, but of course the question is, is time on our side? Um, there are external factors, there are complicated historical contingencies. 
um, I sure hope so. And I say I um, or we, um, not only because I'm originally from Taiwan, but also um, as someone who endorses a democratic solution to identity issues, uh, I certainly hope so, but perhaps only time will tell. Thank you.